Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who are in mourning. Exult and be satisfied at her consoling breast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. It's a great joy to be present for the sake of the celebration of the fourth Sunday of Lent on this Laetare Sunday. We know from the customary rose-colored vestments that we find ourselves at the halfway point in Lent. And as our opening antiphon begins, Rejoice, Jerusalem! We rejoice today in a special way as we advance in the desert with our Lord halfway accomplished through our sacrifices. The format for celebrating our Mass today with the priests only is very unnatural for the liturgy. For the presence of the people with the priests are the sign of Christ being with the family of faith and never leaving them. And within this, to surround the altar with those who believe and in this uncustomary time, we obey, we listen to, we follow the gift of our bishop and all the Catholic churches around the world, really, for the sake of this um, effort in maintaining the health of our neighbor in a most contagious time. So let us enter deeply into this gift of prayer as we begin with every Mass by calling to mind our sins and seeking to draw most closely to Christ. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, 
The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth, handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in his hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose, beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The Word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground, made clay with the saliva, and smeared the clay on his eyes, and said to him, Go. Wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see.
His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Someone said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, He is of age. Question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. But if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, We see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Very good. Well, 
That's a long enough gospel for you to sit down in your living room and watch Mass, huh? Very good. As we reflect upon the readings of this day and consider the week in which we find ourselves in Lent and notice these lovely rose vestments that I'm wearing, we are led to rejoice. For this is what the church is called to do. Rejoice within the full truth and splendor of the salvation of God. But we in a special season, this season of somberness, of sacrifice, of repentance, of prayerfulness, of almsgiving, we don't open ourselves to rejoicing with that full-throated praise that we would give like on Easter Sunday. But we are at the halfway point. The journey of Lent is halfway through. And so the church rejoices in anticipation of how much more closely we are to those holy prayers of our Lord's passion, death, and resurrection, where he proves that in his resurrection he is the light of the world, which has been referred to this morning. We have been journeying this Lent through the desert with our Lord, just as he did for 40 days prior to his earthly ministry. And we, I think, could all agree that this first half of Lent has been probably the most memorable Lent in all of our lives with respect to the restrictions that are present within our culture and time today. And we pray in a special manner for the resolution of this current virus and for the health of the human family and yet we sit still in the middle of the desert. We do not know what lies ahead, but we trust. Just as our Lord was present with Christ in the desert, in the wilderness, in those uncertain moments, in those bleak times, so too are we assured of the presence of Christ as well. We have a striking gospel of the man born blind and the back and forth that exists between him and Jesus and the Pharisees is captivating because our Lord unfolds a layer of mercy and service to his neighbor who could not see. But we know that this theme of vision is one that our Lord weaves in to sinfulness and to truth. And so we pray that our eyes may always be opened to the truth that our Lord sets down before us. And even though so many may be blind within our world, that does not mean that we follow their lead or their step, but rather we turn to heaven. We turn to heaven so that we may see, and in seeing we rejoice. We rejoice because we're overwhelmed with the gift of being able to see. I think it's easy for us to pass over the human dynamic of this fellow who has been blind his entire life and now has the opportunity to see. He's thrown into this kind of debate of who is the cause of his, uh, of his restoration. But if we focus upon the dynamic we become captivated at the natural dynamic. If you've ever searched YouTube, for example, um, children who see for the first time, you know, the special glasses that have been put on the, the two-year-old or the five-year-old or the seven-year-old, where there was some eye abnormality or um, some uh, very strong need for vision, and you see how their face lights up when they see the when they see the face connected to the voice of their mother connected to the voice of their father their doctor their siblings they see for the first time they see the vibrant color of their toys things that they've felt within their fingers but have never seen the bright pinks and blues and greens that the toy has to offer their eyes are wide open. They're open so much that they want to receive everything. They're almost overwhelmed. 
and accompanying those wide saucered eyes is a huge smile because they're overwhelmed with what they're seeing. This heart-tugging opportunity on YouTube is one that we can parallel very linearly to the one who sees with the eyes of heaven. When we can see how our Lord is with us, even in difficult times, when we can see how beautiful and vast his life is in our midst, when we can see how when we set aside the things of darkness and let them go, how bright our future can become in heaven, our eyes are that far opened. We see this a lot within those who enter uh, the full uh, sacramental life of the church through our CIA. There's something that has led them into the tradition of our family of faith. And even though their origins um, have drawn them up through so many years of life, when they get that first taste of Catholicism, they're buying more saint medals than you can count. They've got religious pictures all over the place. All they want to do is go to adoration. Why? Because their eyes have been opened. And we who are cradle Catholics look at them and say, huh, I wish I had that. But you know what? We do have it. We have it through them. They who have been blind, who now see, show us, who have been seeing what we're actually looking upon. This is the strength of the family of faith and how we learn from one another. Though this day is given to rejoicing and the dynamic of focusing on the blind being able to see is an occasion for rejoicing, we may be finding it very difficult to rejoice within this time. The language and theme of today is the unknown, the uncertain, the restriction of what we would truly want to do. And because of this uncertainty, we're finding that there are things that we once thought were in our control now are not. And so what we desire to do is to turn to God in everything. We have been impacted within our daily living, but we have not been stripped of that joy which heaven offers us. So let us continue to walk patiently and faithfully and prayerfully and charitably seeking the good of our neighbor, reaching out to those who we know who may be staying home because of their older age, concerned about going out into public, checking upon them and making sure they're provided for in the few essentials that seem to be flying off the shelves in an irrational manner. We share this gift and generosity of faith within a difficult time but we know that our Lord is always with us. So let us rejoice on this Laetare Sunday. And even though we cannot now receive Holy Communion, we enter into the deep tradition of our Catholic faith of the prayer of spiritual communion, a form of prayer utilized by the saints for centuries, communicating to God their desire to receive our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament in a time when they could not. Some saints, such as Padre Pio, for example, was known to have prayed the prayer of spiritual communion upwards of every 15 minutes of his being awake because he thirsted so deeply for our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, but he obviously could not celebrate Mass every 15 minutes of his priesthood. Within this, then, we find ourselves in a different manner. For the sake of the health of our neighbor, we are restricting our public gathering. It would be selfish for us to gather ignorant of the potential danger that could be present. And it grabs our attention in a special way as Catholics because it keeps us from our regular life of prayer. Let us not be discouraged, but let us be spiritually open to the Eucharistic graces available in the true presence of Christ so that we may hope within this time and continually be nourished within the gift of Jesus' true presence in the Blessed Sacrament.
Let us pray those words which unite us as a family of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer now our prayers and petitions for our needs and for those of the whole world. That Christ, the light of the world, may consistently shine so that unity and charity may always be seen in his bride, the church. We pray to the Lord. That Christ, the light of the world, may cast out rivalry and the worship of power from the minds of leaders of nations, we pray to the Lord. We pray that our desire and love of the Eucharist continues to grow daily, we pray to the Lord. We, pay, we pray for Brody who will be baptized this weekend. May his Catholic faith be a beacon of light throughout the course of his life. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all of the sick, especially those most affected by the current viral outbreak. We also pray for those who care for them and provide medical and spiritual aid to those who suffer. We also pray for those who are listed in our parish book of the sick. We pray to the Lord that Christ, the light of the world, may raise the dead to eternal glory, especially William Krogsty, husband of Carol Krogsty, for whom this, as we pray today, we pray to the Lord. We ask this and all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our tithe this week will go to the Little Sisters of the Poor. This Mass is being offered for the people of St. Peter and Paul Catholic Church. And the regularly scheduled Mass intentions for the repose of the souls of David Gorski, Shia Eshelman, Jose de Jesus Flores, and Deborah Dwyer, along with the intentions of the Wolowitz family, are being offered by our priests in their private intentions. This is customarily the time for the presentation of the gifts and the taking up of the collection. Both of these actions are signs of the thankfulness of the people of God for the blessings which God has bestowed upon us, and as such, a portion returned to God in gratitude. In a practical manner, our weekly collection is beneficial in supporting our priests, staff, and school teachers. Even though our offices are closed and our students are not in their classrooms, we, just as you, are still working diligently within this time. Furthermore, 
Our weekly collection pays for our utilities, maintenance, and janitorial services, which keeps our church and school both hygienic and beautiful. If you give regularly, either through your parish envelopes or a weekly cash gift, I would invite you to continue to give during this time when we cannot gather together. We do have an online giving option that provides you the opportunity of making a one-time offering to our church, or you can set up recurring payments like a general collection based upon your regular manner of giving. It is certainly not lost upon me that some of you may be nervous about financial matters at this time. This is perfectly understandable. Every offering that you provide assists us in supporting those who give so much to continue the life of our parish and school. It has been proven through history and through personal experience, and even today, that those who give to the Lord shall never be without. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we become the shrine of the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, we accept the you, Lord, may your sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which, we, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out and without end acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Well, yeah, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Very good. <laughs>
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us now pray the act of spiritual communion for those who cannot now receive our Lord within the Blessed Sacrament. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord anointed my eyes. I went, I washed, I saw, and I believed in God. Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Just a, a few things, a couple announcements, I guess you could say. Um, one, um, the daily mass readings and reflections are available on our website under the podcast section on our homepage. Um, and the weekend masses will be available in video in this format um, for Sundays. Uh, know that even though we are not gathered as a family of faith for the celebration of Mass, 
that masses are not canceled, but the publicity of the gathering is suspended for a short time while each priest continues to pray his own private mass, the Eucharistic life continues to be uh, moving within our world and within our community. And so we can unite through the prayer of spiritual communion to that Eucharistic life, which is present in our midst, but at this time, not accessible to us. So stay strong know of our prayers and we'll take this one step at a time very good now a special prayer over the people look upon those who call to you O lord and sustain the weak give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through christ our lord the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.